And a very active stretch of dangerous weather ahead means having a safe plan in case storm. Yeah, going to be uh, warm for all those warm weather enthusiasts, right? Uh, we've got much more coming up on weather. Fun way to get the kids involved, too, so that everybody knows uh, where that agreed upon spot is in the house. All right, we've got another hour of weather underground headed your way next. We're in those areas across sections of the southeastern U.S. So we're talking uh, Alabama into the state of Georgia, parts of the Florida Panhandle as well. Let's look at our Torcon values into tonight. We're starting in the Memphis, Tennessee area, parts of northern Mississippi. These are the locations where we've got those Torcon values up to a four out of ten. You notice as you head farther to the east, the Torcon values go down to the three two range. So again, not zero, but most certainly not a huge threat of tornadoes as we get later in the day and those storms move farther to the east. Uh, looking at the future radar around the Memphis area, we're going to be looking at those storms through the dinner time hours, so 6, 7, 8 o'clock. I think by the time we get into the late evening, any storms would be hit or miss in nature as the bulk of the storms will have passed through. But I would say beyond 10 o'clock should be good there in western Tennessee and especially portions of Arkansas. How about Jackson, Mississippi? You're kind of right on the edge of that Torcon of 3 or 4, so so again, treat it as a chance of an isolated tornado, but uh, likely not to see uh, any kind of outbreak. With that said, all it takes is one warning and you've got to get to your safe spot. So know where that safe spot is, uh, particularly as you travel I-20 and points to the north. So let's track this threat out for you. And again, Jackson looking at a little later than Memphis, so probably closer to 8, 9, 10 o'clock for those thunderstorms at the onset. And storms will continue towards the midnight hour. We get you into the very early morning. Still an isolated storm chance. I think once we get beyond 4 a.m., things quieter for you. And Montgomery, Alabama, we start things up at 4 a.m. You can see some showers, rumbles of thunder out there around uh, 4, 5 a.m. And even towards late morning, maybe an isolated shower for the lunchtime uh, commute. Maybe you're a late uh, morning worker or you're just going out for your lunch break, Mike or Mark. Philly uh, there in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, let's look at the Milwaukee forecast first. I mentioned the chance of showers, even a rumble of thunder tonight, and then next few days, showers across the board. Kind of looks like a lucky, you know, uh, slot machine win, but not necessarily when we're talking about the forecast for the end of the week and weekend, right? Not necessarily what you want to see. Temps uh, generally in those mid to upper 50s for high, so we're not going to be crazy cold with the rain showers, uh, but still a little bit cooler. Uh, upper low drifting to the north and east late week, but another one says, oh, no, don't worry, I'll take it from here. I'll step in, and, and that one moves in. So that's going to keep us a bit unsettled, a bit cloudy as we head into the upcoming weekend as well. So, uh, you know, when one door closes, when a, another one opens, when one low leaves, another one enters. And that means widespread showers from the Midwest into the Northeast as we go through the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. So depending on where you are farther west, closer to the Great Lakes, I think more rain showers on the uh, early side of that time frame. So you can see the Great Lakes during the day on Thursday into Friday. Plenty of showers, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder. By the time we get into Saturday afternoon, a second round coming into places like Chicago, like uh, Columbus and Cincinnati and Indianapolis. And then by later Sunday, places like Chicago, Milwaukee, generally beginning to dry out, whereas spots in the northeast beginning to see more more rain showers take over. So the I-95 quarter, a little soggy uh, to end your Sunday. European model keeping generally the accumulations on the medium side. We're talking one to three inches across parts of the Midwest, and the USGFS has generally similar totals, Mike, so shouldn't be too much rain for anybody to handle. Right, Alex, As we look towards the middle Tennessee area, but western Tennessee, Memphis, a Torcon of three, or rather four, uh, three, then two as you head to those communities just to the west of Nashville. So plenty of areas where we need to be aware, as Mark pointed out, we've got that likelihood or that possibility of spinning storms. So that rotation uh, within those storms that could prompt more tornado warnings. Be ready to move if you're in these areas. Know where your safe spot is and have a way to get those alerts. We look at the future radar. Where are the storms headed? Well, as we get towards the dinner time hour, we're looking at portions of the Mississippi River, uh, places like Memphis, uh, right up through extreme eastern parts of Arkansas, extreme western Mississippi. Mississippi. They continue east as we head into the late evening, early morning hours. Nashville, possibility of a thunderstorm, at least some rain. I think better chances for thunderstorms early in the morning across southern Mississippi and Louisiana. Absolutely. And so now as those temperatures rise, it is a time to start thinking about how dangerous leaving kids or pets in cars can be. Here's meteorologist Reynolds Wolf to explain how to stop hot car tragedies.